Welcome back! We are doing more work with Esha because there's so much to learn with Esha and just the fact that you've made some first nutrition facts tables is fantastic. However, there's more to it and we can add more layers of complexity as we're going along. And so today we are going to talk about voluntary nutrient declarations in Esha. We've been digging into nutrition facts tables and honestly we have gotten a sense that there's some nutrients that are consistently declared. But you know there are more vitamins and minerals out there, and there's other nutrients. There's uh, perhaps macronutrients like omega-3 fatty acids that may be interesting in your product, and they're not naturally showing up in ESHA. So how do we go about changing the default settings in ESHA so that we can see those nutrients? And also, how do we, how do we know what's worthwhile? So at the end of this video, you will be able to use the Claims tab in ESHA to identify relevant nutrients for voluntary status. And then we will modify the label to contain voluntary nutrients as appropriate. And so just because the nutrient's there doesn't necessarily mean you want to declare it, but in some cases the nutrient doesn't show up in your nutrition facts table and you should declare it because it is useful from a marketing and advertising perspective. So I always joke that we are friends. I have preloaded our ESHA into Splashtop. And again, if you haven't used Splashtop, please make sure to inform yourself about how to use it um, and go back to some of the preliminary um, videos that I prepared on how to use Esha. So I'm assuming that you've, you are able to enter a recipe, you are able to modify your serving size, you're able to go in and do in the edit label some of those basic fun functions like changing your serving, uh, your serving content to... Uh, be per one quarter of the container or in that household measure metric measure uh, format. I'm also making the assumption that you can go in and do the editing of your ingredient and allergen statements. So I have my carrot and uh, kale coleslaw that we've been working on is my imaginary recipe. To be quite honest, I do make carrot and kale coleslaw quite a bit at my house because uh, carrots are cheap and kale is something I can grow in my garden year round. So just, uh, just a reminder, um, to make it a little bit easier to view in Esha, reminder, use a big screen. Don't try and watch these videos on your telephone. And we have had the joke that you can plug your TV into your computer using an HDMI cable. That may help people like myself who are hitting middle age see, um, because the font is a little bit small. But you can also jump in here and click original size instead of scale size, and that will make it much more like uh, as if you were seeing it in your own laptop or computer screen. So I've got kale, carrots, hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds, and salad dressing. I couldn't remember what salad dressing. I've got a coleslaw salad dressing here today. Um, and if I jump out to my label, I would have adjusted it because again, remember that table of reference amounts indicated that for salad, and, and do remember you do need to use that table of reference amount um, in lieu of having uh, a single serving package, that reference amount for salad was 100 grams. And so I'm imagining I've got a 400 gram package. It's one quarter of the container and I've got four servings per container. And as such, my nutrition facts table is adjusted. But wait a second, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, well, I, I have all these seeds in here, hemp seeds and pumpkin seeds, because they're nutritionally a good source of omega-3 fatty acids. And wait a second, I've got kale and carrots. Well, aren't they a good source of vitamin A? And maybe kale is a good source of or vitamin K and folate. Well, why isn't this showing up on the Nutrition Facts label? Well, we have to add them as voluntary nutrients. So let's jump out. I want to I want to walk you through a little bit of a process here because uh, in one of our previous videos, I jumped in and just sort of inadvertently said, hey, have some fun with this little claims button. Let's click on it. And if we remember, this is going to be cross-referencing against um, the B01500 uh, section, in particular, B01513 of the Food and Drugs Regulation. 
and is cross-referencing the, the table of nutrient content claims that you can make. And the nutrient content claims are the claims that are specifically cross-referencing the nutrition facts table. And in a reference serving amount of a food product, how much of that nutrient is there? And if, if it meets a minimum standard, you can make a nutrient content claim. And depending on how much of that nutrient is there, you can make different types of claims. So we clicked on the claims button and it cross-referenced against the tables in the food and drugs regulation, what we can and can't say. So if we read through here, we may be able to say it's a low sodium product because of the, the sodium quantity that's on our nutrition facts table. That's already there. But what, what nutrients perhaps aren't there that are interesting? Let's see, we've got these B vitamins, uh, C is, it's rich in vitamin C. Let's expand that a little bit and see what else we can say. Is it, can we say an excellent source of vitamin C? Yes. We will be going through in this, in another video more on the theory side. This is the application side where we talk about these tables. Um, and actually this is not B513, this is B400 zone. Uh, B513 must be the health, uh, health uh, claims. But uh, in this case, we've got an excellent source of vitamin C. That is a possible claim. And so maybe vitamin C is one of the nutrients. Let me see if I can, can I make myself a sticky note? Yeah, I can make myself a sticky note. Let's make a, let's make a note here. So What else can we say here? Let's scroll down here and see what other nutrients may be worthwhile. Oh, check that out. Vitamin K, a rich source of vitamin K. Let's take a look at what we could actually say about this. So we are meeting all of the qualifying conditions. So if I click on qualifying conditions, the food provides 25% or more of the RDI the uh, recommended daily intake for vitamin K with the following ex exception where fortification is not permitted and the additives contribute 25% or more of the total nutrient. It That any claim must only be based on the naturally occurring nutrient level. These are the qualifying conditions. These are the regulations within the food and drugs regulation. That's the actual cross-reference. So we can say rich in vitamin K, excellent source of vitamin K, very high in vitamin K, or a valuable source of vitamin K. So you can go along and make that claim perhaps. Excellent source of vitamin K. What else can we say here? Oh, come on, let me scroll down. My internet's lagging, oh my gosh. <laughs> This is a fun. <laughs> Anyways, you want to go through and take a look at all of these different nutrients that may be relevant to your marketing claim. Now, we often say don't over clutter your label with just every claim that's out there. I remember working with a client one time and um, he, he did have a really nutritionally sound product and we could have made like 25 different claims on the package and it would have just looked like clutter. You need to really hone back in and say, what are those claims that are most important to the demographics that I'm targeting? And think about those trends that are out there. Are there certain nutrients that are getting a lot of appeal from the public? Omega-3 fatty acids, one of those nutrients that's often uh, very popular within. So we want to, let's see if we can see... Now, there's, no, I, I, I want to show you here a couple functions here. If I'm going along and clicking here, I believe that when I click, now suddenly it's going to show up in my nutrition facts table. So here, omega is a source of omega-3 fatty acids. Let's check the qualifying conditions. Click down. Come on. Can, the food contains 0.3 or, uh, grams or more of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids per reference amount and serving of stated size. So that reference amount is from the table of reference amounts for food products, or if it's a prepackaged meal, so it has to be 0.3 grams or more of omega-3 fatty acids 
per 100 grams if it's a prepackaged meal. Think of some of the frozen dinners that you have out there. It would have to be on a per 100 basis in that case. Now, I believe if I click on those sidebar radio bar or radio buttons, that it will show in my nutrition facts table. But I will, I'll, I'm also wanting to show you a different direction that you can do it. So let's say iron, vitamin K, what else looked compelling there? Oftentimes it will be just the ones that are most compelling. You don't have to list everything that's there. You do want to make sure that your list isn't cluttered. Well, manganese, things that are not that are not showing up, they're not going to be compelling or they're not even there in sufficient quantity. Let's click on OK and let's see what happens to my table. And oh, so my claims are showing up in the label, but what I haven't got carrying over here is the fact that if I make this claim using the substantiated wording, I still have to go because that claim has been prompted, I have to now make sure that it's showing up in my nutrition facts table. So these are the official words that I can say about this product. I did have a few different slight choices. If I wanted to say an excellent source of vitamin K or a rich source of vitamin K or rich in, I did have a slight wording difference that I was allowed to use. So if I want to, now that I've made these claims against my product, I need to prompt them in my label. So I need to go to edit label and in the label settings on the left hand column, there's what's called the voluntary nutrients tab. And you can go in and identify which nutrients you want to select to add to your nutrition facts table. Now, one thing of note, almost always when you see omega-3, you'll see omega-6 go along in partnership with it. It's just a, it, it's not a hard and fast rule to my understanding. It is one of those people just do it because it is the right thing to do. Do we have vitamin A on there? Oh, come on, internet. Please don't fail me now. <laughs> there we go, vitamin A. I, I didn't make a claim on vitamin A, but let's just add it for fun because there's carrots in there. There should be vitamin A in there. Vitamin C we had prompted. What you want to do is make sure that any nutrient that you put down here is going to show up in your nutrition facts table too. So vitamin K was in there. Did we hit iron and manganese? Manganese. There we go. Did we get iron? Oh, iron is already on there. That's why. Iron's not a voluntary nutrient. Okay, I'm going to click on settings and boom. Now, suddenly all of those nutrients that were voluntary and we didn't have to have them on there because we prompted the health claim and have this in our potential label copy, we need to make sure that we have prompted the label claim into our nutrition facts table so that consumers can cross-reference and say, yep, it says it's an excellent source of vitamin K. Well, an excellent source of vitamin K means I'm meeting at least, what was it, 25% of the daily value? Well, I've got 194% of the daily value of vitamin K. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I am well versed in my vitamin K eating this delicious kale and carrot la. And so each of these nutrients that are voluntary, as soon as you make that claim, you have to prompt it in your nutrition facts table. So there's a bit of a cycle here that you want to be going about. Admittedly, too, you should be going and cross-referencing. So let's go back and just do one or two of these nutrient content claims in, in uh, the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry. Let's just jump out here. So nutrient content claims. Let's just do one or two of these fast because there's a second video which just talks about this from the from the guide to food labeling for industry. So conditions for making a nutrient content claim, we talked about that, but let's do some of the very specific ones. Let's do the conditions and the specific nutrient content claim requirements for omega-3 fatty acids because, hey, we had all those pumpkin and hemp seeds in there for a reason. 
So nutrient content claims are not permitted on total polyunsaturates and monounsaturates. It has to be specific to omega-3 and omega-6. So you can make quantitative statements stating there are so many grams of polyunsaturated, but if you want to make a substantiated omega-3 claim or omega-6 claim specifically, you have to quantify those out separate. So here are our source claim requirements. If we want to say a source of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids, here are the wordings that we can say. That food has to contain 0.3 grams or more polyunsaturated per reference amount and serving of stated size. So that reference amount and serving of stated size, you can't manipulate it up and down. So that it has, it has to be both. That and is important. It's not an or. It has to be an and. You have to fulfill both of those requirements. And you have to requirement, uh, you have to meet that declaration. So the nutrition facts table must include the declaration of omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, and monounsaturated fatty acids. So as, as I, I knew there was a rule, and let's go back and make sure that we have fulfilled this. So do we have, nope, and you know what we have to also figure out in there? What else did it say? It had to say our uh, mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids. So is that in here? Oh, come on. Come on, internet. Don't, don't, don't die on me now, internet. Come on. Oh, it's so lagging. It's so like monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat. So we saw that if we were going to, if we were going to use the qualified claim omega-3 fatty acids and omega, that we had also had to qualify it with omega-6, monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. Click OK. And so this is the cycle that you need to do. You need to be in ASHA. You need to be in the guide to food labeling for industry. And you need to find these table claims. You can use the claims feature, but you need to make sure that everything's following forward all the way through for all of the conditions that are required. So let's do one more here and then I will call it quits and uh, you can work on some examples yourself. What else did we have in there? We had, uh, did we put in vitamin, yeah, we had a vitamin in there. We had vitamin K. So let's see, what were the requirements? So we have to have a daily value established for the vitamin or mineral. They have to have a minimum of 5% in that stated quant or in that stated size. And what else? The vitamin or mineral declared as a percentage of the daily value of, of the serving size. Yes. And can't be in bottled water. So let's jump out to the tables here. I do want you to read these. Okay, here we go. So if you want to make a contains or is a source of or contains so many essential nutrients, it has to provide at least 5% of the daily value. And it can't be just there because of fortification. So if it's fortification, the it has to be based off of the naturally occurring nutrient level. If we're going to just say contains, then it has to be declared on the nutri uh, nutrition facts table in the absolute amount and in the percent daily value. And that exemption for uh, if, if you are making a claim on a product and your product is normally exempt from having a nutrition facts table, now you have to make a nutrition facts table for this product. Is it a good source? If it's a good source, it is 15% of the daily value, unless it's vitamin C, and then it's 30% of the daily value. And last but not least, and of course it can't be from fortification, it has to be naturally occurring, it has to meet the conditions in this column here. So again, it has to be prompted into there. So. Excellent source. Yes, I was correct. I always I always have to remind myself of these numbers. Um, if I want to say it's an excellent source of vitamin K, it has to provide at least 25% of the daily value. And in, if it's vitamin C, it has to be 50% and it has to be based off of the naturally occurring total 
uh, that and so again it the fortification can't be contributing more than 25% of that. And in this case, we don't have fortification. Now, if we're adding vitamins and minerals as fortification, now we are allowed to say with added vitamins or fortified with, and so on. And the last uh, one that's down here is that that percent is higher in this nutrient than the reference food. So for example, you maybe have a product but uh, a baseline product and you have uh, somehow improved the nutritional value then you can make this higher than so i think that's it in terms of doing the work in esha and so now we can make these sorts of claims we have substantiated so we've got the capability we could go and make a uh, excellent source of vitamin a excellent source or no we can't say excellent source of vitamin c we can say a source of vitamin c we could say a uh, good source of iron. We can't. We can say it's a source of calcium. It's a source of potassium. But uh, we have substantiated this. But we've also made sure that we are fulfilling the full requirement of those claims within our label copy here. So I think that is some good fun for you to explore. And of course, you are always welcome to ask me questions as you're going along. And do watch for this other video that complements this, that talks about the nutrient content claims so that you really understand the, the capabilities within the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry and the importance of the wording. Because as much as we'd love to just go out and say all sorts of wonderful things, you have a very clearly regulated way of wording things in Canada. So do pay attention to all those different elements. Have fun with this. Ask questions as you're going along, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.